Welcome, everybody. Uh, in lesson 3.4 here, the essential question is how can you use place value to round decimals? Well, when we round decimals, we're using the same principles uh, and same steps that we're using when we round whole numbers. Uh, if I could review with you here, and we would take a look at a whole number like 423. If we were rounding 423 holes to the hundreds place, uh, the fours in the hundreds place, we know that our rules for rounding tell us that we look right next door and the two is going to do the talking. The two is going to tell that four what to do. Now that four is either going to stay exactly where it is or it's going to round up. Remember the phrase that helps us remember uh, if this number is five or more we raise the number to the left uh, and if it's four or less we let it rest. All right. Since this number right here, this two, is four or less, that means that's going to tell that four to stay exactly where it is, and the rest of these numbers come become zeros. Therefore, 423 rounded to the nearest hundred would be 400, uh, because 423 is closer to 400 than it is to 500. Now, if we understand those principles, we'll go, we're going to be able to round decimals because it's, it's, it's just the same steps involved. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's take, for example, this decimal. The decimal here that we have is 34 hundredths. And if we were rounding this 34 hundredths to the nearest tenth, uh, we would have to take a look at the number that is right next door to the tenths place, uh, which would be the four. And this four is going to tell this three what to do. Once again, that three is going to do one of two things. It's either going to stay right where it is or it's going to raise up one number. Uh, since this 4 here is 4 or less, it's going to tell that 3 to stay exactly where it is. It's going to rest right where it is and that becomes 3 tenths. Now what's different here is when we round decimals, after we round it to the nearest place that we're supposed to round it to, anything after that place gets dropped. So we're not going to add a zero in this spot here, okay, because we're, what we're doing with the decimal is we're rounding it to the nearest tenth. So we don't want to see what's in the hundredths place here. So the closest tenth that 34 hundredths is to is three tenths. So three, 34, ten, 34 hundredths rounded to the nearest tenth would be three tenths. Here's another example. We have the decimal is 67 hundredths. All right, so if we have 67 hundredths and we're rounding 67 hundredths to the nearest tenth, tenth place is underlined, this 7 here is going to tell this 6 what to do. Since that 7 is 5 or more, that 7 is telling that 6 to raise up to a 7. And the nearest tenth that 67 hundredths is, is closest to would be 7 tenths, uh, whatever's after. <clears throat> whatever's after the place that you rounded gets dropped, whatever's in front of it would stay the same. Therefore, your answer uh, to 6700 rounded its nearest tenth would be 7 tenths. Now we have the decimal 245 thousandths. And if we were taking these 245 thousandths and we were rounding it to the nearest hundredths place, well, what we would do is we would take a look at the number that's right next door to the place that we're rounding to, and that's the 5 here. All right, this 5 would be telling this 4 to round up to a 5. Now, what happens at this point here is everything that is in front of the place that you're rounding would stay the same. Therefore, the 2 would come down along with the decimal. Everything that's after the place that you're rounding gets dropped. Therefore, 245 thousandths would round to 25 hundredths. Now, what I did with this example was I placed a whole number uh, in the ones place. So now what I have is I have the number 2 and 373 thousandths. So if I was taking 2 and 373 thousandths and was rounding it to the nearest tenth, I followed my same rules. The same rules apply. The tenth place is being underlined. You look right next door to that tenth place. And this number in the hundredths place will tell 
the tenths place what to do. Uh, since that number that's next to the tenths place is 5 or more, that 7 is telling that 3 to raise up to a 4. Now what happens is everything in front of that place that you rounded would stay the same. The decimal stays, the 2 stays. Everything that's after the place, after you round, gets dropped. Therefore, the closest tenth that 2 and 373 thousandths is to, the closest tenth that that is to, is 2 and 4 tenths. So 2 and 4 tenths would be your answer. Okay, and here's our next example. We have the number 5 and 281 thousandths. So if I was taking this 5 and 281 thousandths and was rounding it to the nearest hundredth place, I know that I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth place, so the place that's right next to that hundredth place, which is the thousandth place, is going to do the talking. It's going to tell that hundredth place what to do. Uh, since the thousandth place is uh, four or less, that tells the eight to stay exactly where it is. Everything that's in front of that place is going to stay the same. Everything that's after that place is going to get dropped. Therefore, four, five and two hundred eighty-one thousandths rounded to the nearest hundredth would be five and twenty-eight hundredths. And that's how we round decimals. Just keep in mind it's the same principles that are involved when we round whole numbers. We have to f find the place that we're rounding to, and then we look right next door, right to the right, uh, and the place that is right next to it will tell the place that you're rounding to what to do. And remember that little saying we have, five or more raise the score, four or less let it rest. Hope this helps, and if you have any questions, make sure you ask them in class.